The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, first of all, uh, TFNN is having a special this week. If you go to TFNN in the first part of the uh, website there, they have breaking news. They're offering uh, my uh, newsletter uh, free for one month. I tried to get uh, Tom to lower the price, but he was he stuck by his guns. He would not reduce it any more than free for one month. So that's a pretty good price, and it has a money-back guarantee. Uh, anyway, we're, what we're going to do today is um, we're going to go down uh, history lane a little bit because we've got something really big happening in one of the stocks we've been following for a long, long time. Actually, in the middle of the summer uh, is when we've been watching it, and that's Apple uh, when it hit that $700 level. And, uh, you know, we, we were just looking at it there because the news was so very bullish and, you know, there was not one analyst that was bearish and yeah. You know, Yada, 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 it just goes on and on. This is all about technicals, folks. It has nothing to do with fundamentals. I don't own an iPod. I don't uh, have an iPhone. Uh, you know, so uh, this is just a technical picture of Apple. We're going to go back almost 10 years and examine this because what we have happening right now is Apple is, uh, it appears to be making a three drive to a bottom pattern at this area of around 400 to $394 per share. So we're about 5% away uh, from that figure. Um, if you'll study the chart, you'll see that it's a 786 retracement from the June 2007 low. It's a 1.618 uh, expansion from the low in May of 2012. Uh, plus, we have a huge A, B equals CD pattern that started way back in September, making the low in November, and then we rallied up to the 382 level. Uh, at 592, and that's when, you know, we were really, you know, saying this had some really bearish implications, and now that pattern will finish around the $400 to $394 per barrel level, uh, <laughs> per share level. I'm so used to trading crude oil, I forget the, the, the share prices. Anyway, but the number is, uh, is 394. Now, we might go lower than that. I know Basil says that there's a possibility of 356, and and believe me, that is certainly possible because that's with, within about 6 or 7% of the target that we're looking at. But uh, what I thought would be interesting is, is, you know, we can all see this pattern, and, yeah, it looks really good, and we've looked at it over the last 18 months. But does the pattern really, does the pattern in Apple really have any merit? I mean, you know, we, we see these patterns all the time. Some of them work. You know, some of, some of them don't work. So the best thing that that we can do to look uh, at what's going to happen to the future, of course, is to go to the past. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take you back about, uh, I think we're going to go back about to 2005. We're going to go back about eight or nine years. And I'm going to post into Tiger TV the ABCD patterns uh, that we've had in Apple uh, during this time. In 2006, we had a beautiful A, B equals C, D pattern, very similar to the one we're having now. That was July of 2006, and the market went from uh, roughly $50 a share up to $193 per share. Again, uh, in 2008 to 2009, we had another A, B equals C, D pattern that ended uh, during the, the time we were having the TARP debacle and all the banks were, you know, failing and General Motors was going bankrupt and, uh, you know, they, they said if we didn't have $700 billion to put in the economy, you know, the world was going to come to an end. Well, the world would have come to end for Bank of America and J.P. Morgan and a few others, but the rest of the world would have kept on moving. But uh, we finished the second A, B equals C, D in um, January of, um, of 2009. Um, it actually bottomed a little bit before the rest of the market did in March of 2009, and then the market uh, proceeded to go higher. And it did not have another A, B equals C, D pattern until uh, August of 2000, excuse me, May of 2011. And that's the, the spot that we're looking at uh, from where we, we measured our 786 to get us at the 394 level. But if you look at this long-term weekly level, 
you'll see that from the from the low of 2009 until where we come in at the 394 level, that will be an exact 50% retracement of that move. And uh, so you're going to have so many ratios coming together at that time because uh, we're completing the final uh, of the fourth one of the ABCD moves uh, coming in here anytime now between now and April 19th. I, I did a few little cycle things uh, to try to come up with a date, and the best thing I can come up with is in about 10 days, sometime between now and uh, April 19th is what I'm looking at for this final uh, leg on Apple uh, coming in at this 50% level. But uh, if you listed these things, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat them of why I think Apple is going to be something to look at at this point because we have an AB equals CD measuring to 394. We have a three drive to a bottom pattern uh, on the weekly chart and also on the daily chart that measures to 394. We have a 786 retracement off of the uh, May low of 2011 that comes in at 394. We have a 50% retracement off of the low of 2009 that comes in at 394. And so, uh, and we also have a 1.618 expansion off the May low of last year that comes in. So you have a, a series of six numbers that are there that tells you that the Apple should be a pretty good buy at that price. One thing I, I know for sure, with a 100% guarantee, it's much cheaper to buy Apple at 394 than it was at 700. That's the bottom line, and uh, you know nobody's going to want to buy it when it's at 394. Everybody wanted it when it was 700, but nobody will want it at 394, and it'll probably go below 400 just because 400 seems to be a magic number, just like 700, 700 was. And, uh, you know, people have, uh, I don't think they have any mystical qualities or anything, but it will probably go below it just to get the financial press interested uh, in it. But, frankly, this has been a long-term bullish stock going back to, uh, I believe, 1980s. And, uh, you know, it has been a, uh, you know, been a, been a very incredible stock to own. And just because it's, uh, you know, dropped about 40-some, uh, yeah, about 40% in value, well, it's more than that, almost 50% in value, uh, yeah, it is 50% value, it, it, that it's really uh, uh, not still, I mean, the products are still good and everything, it's just it's in a, it's in a, a corrective mode. That's, you know, the bottom line. So this is uh, something that we're going to be looking at each day that I do the show. We'll follow Apple until we get to this level, uh, down at this 394 level. Now, the ideal situation is it gets there real easy and doesn't have any huge gaps and some, you know, crazy... Uh, you know, things like an iPhone causes brain cancer, you know, crazy stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the uh, the main thing is is that, you know, we watch it closely between now and the uh, 19th of April. And that's just a simple cycle. I mean, I just did some counting of what the previous cycles have done, and uh, that that's all that particular, you know, cycle really happens to be. You know, that's uh, nothing more uh, or nothing less. You know, t talking about, you know, things that, uh, you know, you hear on the Internet and, and stuff like that. I saw the most ridiculous thing. Uh, someone, I'm going to post this into Tiger TV. I hope you get to see it. But it shows a picture of a thing that looks like a mosquito, but it's not. And it's supposed to be a U.S. government drone that looks like a mosquito that has a needle that can uh, put a, a DNA, take a DNA sample from you, also put in a GPS system to know exactly you know, where you are and all this stuff. And it, it, this is totally bogus, folks. This thing is not true. Uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things that someone has a lot of time on their hands that likes to, you know, say a lot of stuff and put it in the news so you have to check it. This is why, you know, when you do your trading, you have to be responsible for your own trading. No one else can have the responsibility, you know, for this trading at all. That You're the only one that can do that. And, uh, you know, we'll see if that's... Uh, uh, if that's going to be the case or not. Now, a few weeks ago, uh, I posted a chart uh, on the uh, Fibonacci uh, ratios and stuff on how they work in time. And uh, as you can see, at the end of March, uh, we had some expansions of uh, 55 weeks, 21 weeks, and 144 weeks that were coming due, you know, towards the end of March. And, and, and certainly, we're past that time. Whether we've uh, reached a, you know, a major top in the stock market, it appears we are, based on some other things. But I, I frankly, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later uh, when we get into the show. The main thing on the first part of the show today, I really wanted to go over uh, Apple because, uh, you know, Apple really looks like 
it wants to uh, you know make that that price level of what we're looking at of uh, three hundred and ninety four dollars a share uh, I don't trade uh, Apple very much at all but some people have a lot of interest in it and uh, when we when we look at the stock it certainly uh, has all the technical things that you could ever ask for uh, in a stock, which it had at the other uh, ABCD patterns that we had in 2006 and 2009 and 2011. So it's the same pattern, just repeating itself over and over again. This time the volatility is much greater because the stock is at such a, a much higher price. Now the best way, I think, for someone to play this, and this is what we will will try to do here in Tiger TV and the Tiger Den, is to look at a uh, about a 450 call on Apple when the stock hits, you know, 394. I, if someone would be kind enough uh, that if to let me know what a 450 June call is selling for now on Apple, we'll get an idea that it, when we get to 394, what that 450 call would be selling for, and that would give us an idea of our risk because the rally should be at least 100 to 150 dollars. So. Uh, depending upon what you can pay, pay for this call when we get there uh, in, a, in a week or so, this would be the, you know an ideal time to put on a high profitable trade with a very very low risk, and that's the, those are the kinds that you try to uh, you know really look at. Um, one other thing that happened over the weekend that I think is important, and, and we'll, we'll cover it a little bit, is the Japanese yen uh, gapped up one more, or the dollar gapped up against the Japanese yen one more time. Uh, we hit the 99 level. Uh, briefly, and there's going to be a little bit of resistance up at the 99.30 level to par, which is 100. Now, remember, in the Japanese yen, that used to trade at the 260s uh, way back in the 1980s. It was 260 uh, yen to the dollar. So uh, that's why you uh, uh, wonder why it's uh, looking at it. Um, right now, uh, the June 450 Apple call is at 14.15. You know, and that and that's uh, it's a call that's out of the money because Apple's trading at the, you know, the 425 level. Now, if you if if Apple drops another thirty dollars, you're probably able to buy this call, this uh, four four fifty or maybe even a 425 call, for around three or four dollars. In other words, you're going to control, you know, a uh, hundred shares of Apple at uh, four hundred dollars roughly, which is uh, you know twelve. Uh, it's, 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 that's a lot of money. Four. That's forty thousand dollars. For about uh, three or four hundred dollars, I mean that's incredible leverage if this works out this way. So it's going to be fun to watch it unfold. But we will watch this. Uh, we'll watch the June 425, and we'll watch the June 450 call because if we get them down there, and that'll give you plenty of time because you'll be in April, and I believe they expire the third week in June, and so that would give you a whole month, you know, to look at it. So we got to take a little break here to uh, pay a few bills, and we'll be right back. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, we're back, and I wanted to remind you, uh, those of you that don't get the newsletter, uh, if you go into uh, TFNN on the front page under the breaking news, we're offering a one-month uh, free subscription to my newsletter and uh, you will get it for a month. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time, you know, doing it, and it's got some good information. But you know, like everything else, you know, some of it works, some of it doesn't. But in general, it does give a pretty good idea of where some of these things are, are moving. Um, this is a shorter segment of the, uh, of the radio show, so I wanted to cover uh, one of the markets that I follow uh, a great deal, and that is the, uh, the gold market. Uh, because we have uh, we had this tremendous rally of uh, about $45 an ounce. I mean, that's not a lot anymore in gold. I mean, it couldn't even rally that much when the Cypress situation was going on. But uh, today's action is is very critical uh, from the bullish side of gold. Uh, if you're you know if you're really bullish gold, because from the low we made down at the uh, 1539 level, and all that 1539 level did. Was, and I'll show this uh, in just a few minutes, uh, is just take out that 618 that we've hit four times now uh, in, the, in the gold market on the weekly basis. But what's happened over the past several days uh, is we pulled it back to a perfect 38% retracement so far today down at the 1566 level. Now, if gold is really good, and I'm still not convinced that it is, uh, it could shoot out of here uh, and you know, then start uh, another leg up. Uh, last night it gave us a, if you'll look at the Tiger TV chart that I posted, 
uh, gave a very nice uh, Gartley sell signal up at the 1580 level and then came down to the 382 level to, uh, you know, complete that uh, thing. But the main thing that uh, I'm going to put up here is that if you'll, if you'll take a look at the uh, long-term weekly chart uh, that we have in gold, you'll, you'll see that uh, we've had a, um, we've hit this 61% uh, retracement uh, coming off of the, of the low of uh, last February. We've hit it one, two, three, four times. Uh, this past uh, time, we we uh, we took out the lows uh, of the we, uh, uh, that we made a few weeks ago down at the 15, uh, 55 level. That was really you know not very much. But for for in order to really uh, gold to get moving, it has to you know start to increase uh, up. And frankly, I I don't believe that it's going to hold. And the reason why is because silver is uh, incredibly weak. Uh, platinum is you know weak. Copper is uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a dog just painted in the color of copper. I mean, copper won't rally at all. That's a very very bad sign. So, uh, all of the industrial metals look like they're heading lower, which you know tells us that you know the economy is not nearly as good as uh, you know they're trying to tell us uh, in the news. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. But the key figure today in gold is 1566, and then of course if that breaks, it would be the 61 percent retracement of that move, which would take it down to um, somewhere in the 15, um, in the 15, uh, 50 area, and uh, we'll have to, to watch that. But so far, that's what we're watching, you know, on a shorter term basis. Um, the silver just looks, uh, just looks horrible, no matter how you look at it. It just doesn't want to rally, uh, and the liquidity is drying up. You know, we're, we're losing players in the silver market. As you know, it's one-sixth of the volatility of the gold and it's starting to lose some of that luster too. So there's not a lot of players coming in to you know to support these these markets. One of the things that Rich Anderson mentioned uh, when he was on the show, uh, the commodity show last week, was the fact that Calpers, you know, the large California uh, teachers retirement fund or Alex uh, employees retirement fund, uh, took a billion dollars out of the commodity markets and uh, moved it to someplace else. They probably put it into Treasury bonds because they have a tremendous uh, affinity of doing the wrong thing at the wrong time and uh, but we'll, we'll see if that is uh, going to be the case but that when you take a billion dollars out of one market and you know the believe me the commodity markets a small small market compared you know to the forex markets and stuff like that it's uh, it's really uh, it's really something that is uh, you have to pay attention to uh, in, in, in my opinion so that's uh, that's what I'm looking at in gold uh, you have to respect the move because it was $45 very quick, but it was most probably a short covering move because the open interest did not increase Friday. You know, there was no new buying coming in uh, in gold when it made new lows. That was all short covering, and that's uh, that's one of the reasons why we, you know, bring this to your attention here. There's no reason to, to be bullish about it. The gold-silver index is, is also uh, not, not acting well. It's also been at that. 61% retracement now for for quite some time, and it also is uh, you know going below it, and is is not really a very good sign at all when you look at this from a you know from a longer term perspective. It just really just doesn't make a good good trade. Anyway, take another break here, and then we're back with the second half of the show. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about foreign currency now, especially the yen, because it's getting a lot of play. Uh, we're, reaching, we're getting very close to par, which is 100. Uh, remember, the yen used to be at the level of, uh, oh, you know, 260, 260 and change, you know, way back about 15 years ago. I think it was about 15 years ago. And now, uh, you know, we're, we're having a, you know, huge rally back. And all I do is I watch it on a smaller time scale to try to, uh, you know, enter without risking very much. We, we mentioned several times uh, on the previous shows that you want to watch for these A, B equals C, D patterns that form. Uh, what I did in, uh, for Tiger TV, I posted the long-term uh, yen chart going back several years to show the 48-week cycle, almost a one-year cycle, that's repeated four times. And if you'll take a look at it, you'll see that that cycle is due to crest, uh, you know, any time now. In fact, it's been uh, going farther and farther to the right, which means it's even more bullish. So you want to be, you know, waiting to get a really significant, you know, A, B equals C, D correction. We had one of those uh, last week that we that we talked about when the yen was down around the 93 level. And, uh, you know, it's since moved uh, a little over $6,000 uh, in three days uh, on the way up. And, it uh, looks like it's getting ready uh, now to complete a you know a three drive pattern around the 99.50 uh, to par level. This is something that we'll report on uh, when we get into the show on uh, Wednesday. <laughs> It'll probably hit it. It's only 25 minutes left to go to the show, 
uh, today. We might even hit it today by that time. But we're, we're going to be looking 99.50 to par uh, on the uh, Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar because it looks like it could uh, be moving there. Uh, someone asked a question uh, during the break about Apple. You know, how can Apple go up? You know, if the, if the stock market is, is, goes down, folks, stock market has been straight up since September, and Apple has been straight down. Remember, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. So you have to remember that each stock is different in that particular one. And you could make example after example of that. Hewlett Packard, you know, any of them. You know, uh, Google goes up. You know, Apple goes down. I mean, everyone should. Uh, each time you do a stock, you should look at them separately. The indices are okay, but remember, the you know, the, the Dow Jones is price weighted. The uh, S&P is cap-weighted, but it's only 500. The real index that counts is the New York Stock Exchange Index because that's thousands of shares, uh, well over 6,000 shares, and it covers a global basis, and it's all the best companies in the world. Uh, unfortunately, they do a very poor job of merchandising their index, so the, the hedge funds don't trade it, and uh, that, that's been the big problem. But anyway, that's what we're Let's get back to the ABCD pattern that we were talking about here in the Japanese yen. Uh, we completed that at 93. It's now completing its AB equals CD move. In fact, what I'm going to do now is just to show you the pattern that I'm watching here uh, on a on a shorter term basis because you'll be able to see that we're getting ready to uh, make the 1.618. I'm going to blow it up so you can see it real easy, and you'll see that we're getting up here uh, near par is going to be a very interesting spot to uh, you know take a look at. Uh, the, uh, the copper on a uh, on a long excuse me on the Japanese yen because that's where we should have a pretty good correction and uh, that's when what we'll be looking for to see uh, the correction come in uh, around between 99.50 and par is what we're we're looking for that's the 1.618 expansion we had that huge move uh, you know on Thursday uh, you know that that encompassed well over four points which is a tremendous move in in foreign currency that's a lot of money moving folks uh, a lot more than uh, uh, you and I uh, know about and believe me it it takes a, you know uh, uh, not only the Bank of Japan but some other central banks uh, to move it that much because that that is a huge amount and it moved very very quickly and uh, so someone you know had some information that this thing wanted to go higher because we have these you know big moves here and actually we actually gapped up today we left a gap from uh, Friday's high, which in itself is a, a very, very unusual situation. So we could easily, you know, go uh, a great deal uh, higher if we had to. The reason why I'm spending so much time with this is because it, this has been a, a big move for uh, a long time, and I'm going to just to show you the extent of this uh, move because you've been in such a, a bear market for so long. I'm going to post in here the long-term monthly going back uh, uh, 15 years, let me see, 17, yeah, eight, uh, 18 years, and it's going to show the Japanese yen uh, versus the U.S. dollar, and you know where it is, and we're having a, a huge correction, uh, just like we've had many times before, and that's what all it could be is just be a big correction, you know, in the uh, in the big market. Now the 50 percent correction coming off the 2007 high comes in at this 99.50 level. That's that same shorter term pattern that I put on the daily. So that's what I'm. I'm looking at here, so that's the, that's why I'm watching this. And the reason why this is important is because the Nikkei has been, you know, gapping up quite a bit because of the of the weakness uh, in the uh, yen versus the dollar, and that's why we're beginning to, uh, you know, see these moves. And if that stops, that means the Nikkei could, you know, possibly, you know, back off. Uh, you know, it's trading up. Well, it's about half of what. Well, less than half. It's about a third of where it was. In 1989, when it topped in December at uh, 39,000, now that was the Nikkei, the Nikkei Dow. So that's what we're watching uh, in that uh, particular um, uh, index that we're watching. Now the next one I want to I want to look at, of course, is the uh, dollar index because that is uh, you know one that uh, we've been talking about for quite some time, making that uh, uh, Gartley pattern. Uh, sell that came in at the uh, 8330 level, and now we've backed off. and, and Our price objective on this uh, would be down around the, uh, the right, right around the 8100 level in the Dow in the dollar index. This would be equivalent of about 132 to 133 
uh, in the euro is what you'd be what you'd be looking at. And remember, the euro had been down many many weeks. Uh, I think 13 weeks. Uh, it made lower lows and stuff. So this is a, another short covering rally, you know, that we're having in the euro. So we, we you know the markets just don't go straight down forever, uh, with the exception of Apple. And App, Apple had some. You know, they had, they had three $50, $50 per share, you know, 10% rallies in Apple on the way up. And each time everybody said that was the that was the final bottom, and each time it's gone, you know, to newer lower lows. And we're very close to those, uh, breaking out those lows at 419 uh, that we made, uh, you know, several weeks ago in Apple. And that would set up uh, the uh, the price objective that we're looking at, of course, of uh, 394 in the Apple. So that's uh, the dollar index. Uh, where we stand, uh, you know, with that, I think it's, uh, you know, very, very important to, uh, you know, take a take a look at that. Um, the uh, second one that I wanted to uh, bring up here, and that I think is relatively important, is I want to put that euro chart in there because it's the second most act. Well, this is when you do the euro, you're doing it against the U.S. dollar, so you'll see that it just missed the 61% uh, retracement. Uh, you know, by by quite a bit, it was very oversold, and, and now we're trading up into the 130 area, and it's very easy to get the euro up to the 133 area. And that's still in a bear market. Uh, you know, it's just a bear market reaction. Uh, one of the reasons why the currencies are so uh, wonderful to trade is they trade 24/7, five days a week, and they trade off these numbers that we look at, these Fibonacci numbers, you know, extremely well. Um, Someone asked a question about the Gartley pattern, what it really is. H.M. Uh, H. Gartley wrote a book, Profits in the Stock Market, 1937. It was a pamphlet, basically, and uh, it is going to be a, um, well, it is probably one of the most classic books ever done, but it was basically a pamphlet book uh, in a three-ring binder. It wasn't published until 1983, but on page 221 and 222, what he did was he took a, uh, picture of these little ABCD patterns, and he tried to explain it, but his explanation was a little hazy, and that's what I tried to do, was to fit the ABCD with the Gartley pattern to make it, uh, you know, doable that when you have an ABC coming in at a higher bottom, that means that you're in an uptrend. If you have an ABCD coming in at a higher top, you're in a downtrend. That's, you know, the basic thing that, uh, you know, that you're looking at. So this is what uh, this is what we're watching for uh, in the currencies, and boy, believe me, we're every, it's a day-to-day -day thing because you have so many news items that come out now um, that it it gets very very volatile, and you must use stops in all of these market folks because just you ask yourself if you'd have been the wrong side of this dollar yen trade, uh, you would have been absolutely massacred. Had you had a stop in, you would have had a fill. It might it might not have been the fill you wanted, and as a matter of fact, some of the fills were pretty good. But they were within 10 or 15 or 20 pips, which was in a few hundred dollars. When the market's moving that fast, that's pretty good. So uh, I happened to be on the on the right side of it, and it, you know I wasn't aware of it, but I was watching, you know, where the trades were coming from, and you know there was a huge amount of volume coming in on that uh, day on Thursday when we had this big move, uh, you know, that we that we moved. Now I want to go to uh, uh, one of my favorite markets uh, that we've been waiting for. Uh, for quite a while, and this is the Treasury bond market. Um, after we made the butterfly pattern uh, back in November, we came down and made a three drive to a bottom pattern uh, right near the 61% retracement on the weekly chart. And now what we've done is we rallied up to the 61% retracement on Friday up at that 4, 148 level. Uh, we're trading at 147.19 right now. But the zone for this uh, sale comes in between 148 and the 149 level. Now, the only reason I didn't, uh, you know, put a flat out, you know, sell at 148 at the 61% retracement because I am so bearish in bonds, is because we had this really wide ranging bar uh, that occurred on uh, Friday where it was up two points. And for that reason, you know, I have to respect that uh, wide ranging bar. And uh, but you know, we're down about you know 20 ticks or so from the high, but which isn't very much. But somewhere in this area, we are we really want to get short these bonds because I think that's the that's going to be the real uh, the serial killer of the financial markets in the uh, bonds. Uh, David Stockman, who was the uh, officer of budget management uh, under Ronald Reagan, was on today. He has a new book called um, 
something deformation, capital deformation or something like this, but he basically thinks that Bernanke is the serial killer of the bond market and that, uh, you know, it's going to be the uh, the biggest bubble of all. And, of course, he was being uh, disputed by another economist, and they I didn't listen to it, but I, I saw that they were, you know, talking about it. But uh, I, you know, I look at the charts. I don't believe anything these people tell me because I've been, I've been lied to before, so I just try to look at the charts. If prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. That's the, you know, that's the bottom line, you know, of what, uh, you know, what we're really looking at. Uh, one of the reasons, you know, that I look at the, uh, uh, the New York Stock Exchange Index is it's so good uh, as giving you the overall broad market. And uh, if you will uh, uh, take a look at uh, the uh, chart over the, uh, the last couple of years that I posted in here for the uh, commodity markets, and then I overlaid uh, on top of it the New York Stock Exchange Index, you can see the tremendous divergence that we're having in commodities since January. Commodities have been dropping, you know, everywhere. I mean, corn, you know, beans, wheat, everything, uh, steel, silver copper, gold, platinum, all of them have been dropping, you know, very, very precipitously, and yet uh, the price of stocks have been going up. And I believe that's because, uh, you know, the QE3 that we have going on or QE2, whichever we're in right now, is just put, putting money into the market to make it look good, and, you know, it's just not getting ready to go higher. I mean, these commodities should be going up at least with – they have a correlation of well over, uh, you know, 85%. And now the correlation is zero. I mean, you know, something's wrong here, folks. I mean, there, uh, there, there's got to be something wrong with this picture. Maybe the person that's giving this radio show is totally wrong that I, I see something that's not here. But this chart is telling me that it, frankly, is not, uh, you know, this is not a really bullish economy. I mean, why aren't, why aren't people buying commodities to make the products that people buy? I don't understand this, you know, and uh, this is. This is why I look at these divergences because they've, you know, they've kept me out of trouble in the past, and and uh, you know that's one of the reasons why I think uh, you know we should pay uh, pay attention uh, to it now. That's uh, that's 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 the bottom line, especially especially copper. I mean, you know, that's been a, a real dog, and that's one of the big things that's used, you know, in just about you know everything that uh, that we use. And, and, and I think that's an that's an important thing to look at. Uh, we will see. There's another chart that I think is uh, really important on a long-term basis. We'll cover this before the break, hopefully. But this is the uh, chart of the NASDAQ on the weekly basis, and it goes back uh, past 2007, and it shows the, uh, the, the two major A, B equals CD patterns that have formed uh, since the 2009 bottom. And it also shows now that, you know, we have this head and shoulders pattern that is perfectly symmetrical, folks, uh, on the weekly basis. In other words, from the shoulder to the high is equal, and the, and the shoulder, excuse me, the shoulder to the head is equal in time, and it's also on a 1.27 expansion. And then from the head to the shoulder is equal in time, and that's a 786 retracement. That's a definition of a perfect head and shoulders pattern in the NASDAQ on the weekly basis. Okay, we got to take a next, another break, and we'll be back with the end of the show. you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know that you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right of the TFNN homepage. But if you don't have a mobile connection that keeps up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in radio talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed for trading in today's marketplace. 
In order to get the best information available, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com, educating investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, uh, the last reminder, this is the last day for the uh, free newsletter for, uh, for my newsletter, uh, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. If you go to TFNN on the front page, you'll see breaking news, and you get a free 30-day um, subscription. It comes with a money back guarantee, of course, and uh, it's worth it. You know, um, Tom tried to uh, raise the price, but free was uh, what we thought would be fair. Anyway, try it if you like it. Anyway, the um, we're going to talk a little bit about the VIX because Basil spent some time with it. It's uh, it's making a bottoming process now. Uh, it looks like to me, but the next chart that I'm going to post, I think, is the most important chart that uh, for 2013 for all of our subscribers because it shows uh, the New York Stock Exchange Index uh, as it compares to the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. And as you can see, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has made a new high uh, above 2007. They give you, you know, they tell us about this all the time in on the financial press. Just like we made a new high in October of 2007, they were telling us the same thing. And, but the thing is, the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the biggest index of them all, it has not made a new high. It's just barely made the 786 retracement, and it's also completed a you know bearish butterfly pattern and a bearish Gartley pattern and a three-drive pattern. So 
this is one of the reasons why uh, I focused last week on the, you know the markets around the world. They're all in topping patterns. I mean, major topping patterns, or in downtrends. The Asian markets are certainly in downtrends, you know, and they have been you know uh, been doing this uh, you know for 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 quite some time. Just just for an example, you know, they they don't tell you exactly you know everything that's happening in uh, in some of these things, but the uh, if you take a look at we're going to post in here the uh, Hang Seng, and uh, it, because when it was making its high up there at the uh, 24,000 level, that was a perfect 786 retracement coming off of the high from October of uh, 2011, and now we've com we're completing a, you know, a very bearish Gartley, and here it is, you know, 10% lower than it was just a few months ago. So the, you have to, you know, be be prevalent and, or be be aware of what they're trying to tell you when they give you this news on CNBC. You've got to do the work yourself and be responsible, you know, for what uh, for what you're doing. I, I think it's very important. And one other thing that I, I want to mention that one of uh, the traders that I that I know that is very very successful and he uh, he makes he, he believes that his success is based on uh, one thing. He has a little journal that he keeps, but it's called the Gratitude Journal, and every day he writes something that he's grateful about for that day, and uh, that's how he starts the day. So uh, maybe that's what we all should do, you know, because you know we're really lucky in this country because you know we have so many more things than any place else in the world, and you know that's why everybody's trying to get in here, and uh, you know they're not trying to get into China. You know, people are trying to get out of China, so. Uh, and then China's a wonderful country too, and someday you know it's going to be far larger than the United States because they've got you know four times the amount of people that we have, and they're very industrious. They work for eight you know for eight dollars a day, and they've got all the natural resources that uh, that we have. I don't know if you folks know this or not, but if you were to overlay the uh, geographic picture uh, over the geographic picture of China, they're almost equal in in square miles. And they have the same beautiful natural resources. You know, we have the Grand Canyon. They have the Yi River. Uh, you know, it's just, just wonderful, uh, you know, scenery and everything and nice, hardworking people and stuff. But, you know, the economies are different. This is something we have to, that we have to work for. And, you know, that's why we're looking at these, you know, these particular uh, things that, that we're watching. Now, the um, next one I wanted to put in here, it's in Chinese. Well, can't do it, but I'll post the Shanghai market. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.